So far in this mini-series, we focus predominantly on the generally agreed and accepted principles of volume data interpretation. And very often, these lead us to valid conclusions about what might happen next in the price action. However, there are a number of exceptions to these basic principles where actually the opposite happens in the price action. But there's usually sound rationale behind why these exceptions occur. And in this episode, I'm going to focus on one of those exceptions, volume spikes. Stay tuned. Although there are, of course, more, in this series I'll be covering three of the main exceptions to the interpretation of volume data. In today's episode, I'm going to take a look at the first of those, and this is the phenomenon known as volume spikes. Understand the exceptions to the generally agreed principles of price action and volume data, and this will differentiate you from other traders. Let's take a look. So first off, how do we define a volume spike? Well, this is where we see a rapid and significant increase in the volume. Now, this might be four to five times the normal volume for that particular time of day for that asset, or in some exceptional circumstances, it could even be 10 times or more. Now, when we observe a volume spike, it's often caused by some kind of catalyst. So this could be a major economic news event, for example, possibly an interest rate decision that went against expectations, or it could be some other major political event that occurred. The volume spike itself indicates that there's a sudden increase in the involvement of market participants. And this is usually for one of two reasons. The first, that there's a general consensus that there's a large opportunity to take advantage of. Or alternatively, the opposite of that, fear that the markets are acting in an unpredictable and untradable way. To add to the concept of fear, there's also potentially the fear of missing out. So as potential market participants see the price moving very, very strongly under these large volume levels, that fear of missing the opportunity will drive the volume even higher. So how can we use this information to our advantage? Well, very often a volume spike is an indication that there is an imminent reversal in the price action. So it's probably worth mentioning at this point why I consider volume spikes to be an exception to the general principles of volume analysis. So let's think about what we've covered so far. Usually, high volume is an indication of trader commitment to a price move. And because of those high levels of trader commitment, the probabilities have turned in favor of a continuation of that price move, not a reversal. Whereas what we're seeing with a volume spike is certainly high levels of volume. But the fact that these often produce a reversal is the opposite of the normal principles, hence why it's an exception. So what's the rationale behind a reversal following a volume spike? Well, what the volume spike is telling us is that there's been this sudden and significant increase in the number of market participants. So much so that we reach a point where there's actually no one else who's prepared to enter. And when there's no one else prepared to enter the market, the price stalls. And following this, there'll often be the reversal. So you can very often see this behavior if you look at a chart that reacted to a piece of economic news, and let's say the price went up. The following day, you'll very often see the price come back down possibly to the same level as before the market news occurred. Now, because of the nature of volume spikes being influenced by a catalyst of some sort, it means that very often the reversals are more predictable when we look at the volume levels on a daily chart. 
and certainly volume spikes on the lower time frames tend to be more common but less indicative of a reversal. And what we very often observe is that it's the actual bar that has the volume spike that becomes the turning point. But there are also occasions where we see this maybe a day or two days later. So let's now take a look at some examples of this on charts. So we're looking here at a daily chart for the Dow Jones Industrial. And the indicator we see in the middle here is the RVOL or the relative volume indicator. And this gives an indication of how the volume compares on any bar with that of volume for similar times on previous days. But because we're looking at the daily chart, it just compares it to previous days. Now the large green volume spike that we see here, we can see has a value of 5.3. And what that means is that the volume on this particular trading day was 5.3 times higher than it is on average. And if we use a crosshair to look at the price action at the time of this, we can see that we had this significant down bar. And it was those high levels of volume of traded activity that was pushing the price down on this particular day. Now, although the price did continue down slightly the following day, we then saw the reversal, which took the price up to the starting point and then beyond. So despite the frenzied trading activity that pushed the price down here, within a few days, we'd seen the reversal and the price had returned to where it started, which, as I said before, is often what we see with volume spikes. There's another example over here on the left. Now, this is a volume bar with a ratio of 3.35. So strictly speaking, I wouldn't class this as a volume spike. It probably needs to be at least four or five times to be classed in that way. However, despite that, you can see that the high level of volume here did also predict exactly the turning point in price action. If we move along to the left here, we can see another example here. This time the ratio is three. So again, not strictly speaking a volume spike, but regardless of that, it did also correctly predict the turning point in the price action. And we saw the low on this day when we had the high levels of volume and then the price went up from that point on. So a few examples there of how we can use volume data and this particular exception of volume spikes to our advantage when we're making trading decisions. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to cover a second exception, which is to do with fifth wave exhaustions. And if anything, this is an even more common phenomena than volume spikes. So be sure to subscribe to the Darwin X YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to find out some more information about what Darwin X does and how we help traders like you, you can click on the link just below the video link here. But now until next time, trade safe.